Syrian Arab army inflicts heavy losses among terrorists and confronts terrorists who are trying to attack military checkpoints. Washington Post, more than a thousand foreign terrorists enter Syria monthly, even after the U.S. led air raids. And media sources state that ISIS operates under the command of Turkish military leaders and under the guidance of Erdogan's terrorist regime. Good afternoon. Welcome to our news bulletin. I'm Dania Nizam. The Syrian Arab army eliminated a number of terrorists, some of whom are mercenaries holding the Sudanese, Jordanian and Palestinian nationalities belonging to both terrorist organizations of Jabhat al-Nusra and Ahrar al-Sham and destroyed their hideouts, including weapons and ammunition in Al-Ghuta al-Sharqiyya and Al-Qalamun Mountains in Damascus countryside. In Homs and Hama suburbs, the Syrian Arab army units destroyed several hideouts and vehicles, killing all the terrorists inside. In Dara countryside, Syrian Arab army units destroyed a number of vehicles, killing all the terrorists inside in the town of Al-Tayba. Iraqi army purged the areas of Al-Qamishli, Umm al-Hayat, Al-Qaddan and Walibiya, north of Bab al-Governorate, off Daesh terrorists and killed 12 terrorists in Salah al-Din, governorate northeast of Baghdad. Meanwhile, Iraqi security and medical sources said that at least 24 people were killed in a series of bombings in Baghdad and its surrounding. Iraqi security sources said that a booby truck driven by a suicide bomber, exploded at a military checkpoint at the southern entrance of Baghdad, killing 20 people and injuring at least 57 others. Another car bomb exploded in Palestine Street east of Baghdad near a tent where people were holding night prayers, marking the month of Muharram, killing four people and injuring at least 11. The Lebanese newspaper Diyar revealed that the Lebanese army arrested a man holding a nationality from the Arab Gulf who played a pivotal role in the formation of terror cells belonging to Daesh in Akkad and the northern areas of Lebanon. The newspaper pointed out that the terrorists who triggered the start of the volatile security situation in Tripoli were about to trigger another start of violent events in Ain al-Halwi refugee camp coinciding with the battle in Bab al-Tabani with the aim of confusing and exhausting the Lebanese army. Revealing more about the Turkish continuous support for the terrorist organization of Daesh, media sources confirmed that many terrorist groups affiliated with Daesh do actually operate under the command of Turkish personnel who take their directives from Erdogan's regime. The Turkish regime led by Erdogan continues its support for the terrorists by opening its borders and airports for all the terrorists coming from different parts of the world to Syria, providing them with military and logistical support according to several documents, reports and international national statements. The involvement of Turkish Justice and Development Party in supporting the terrorists, especially from Daesh, comes despite two international resolutions. The first one considers Daesh and al-Nusra as criminal terrorist organizations, and the second one criminalizes facilitating the transport and movement of foreign terrorists. Media from inside Ain al-Arab city emphasized that many terrorist groups affiliated with Daesh do operate under the command of Turkish leaders who give the terrorists military guidance, confirming that several Turkish identity cards were found with the terrorists who were killed in Syria. 
In addition to the Turkish official support, several religious extremist groups became active under the guise of relief work, aimed at recruiting young Turks and carrying them to fight alongside the terrorist organization of Daesh in Syria. The new information is added to the photos that showed the exchange of greetings between Daesh terrorists and the Turkish army on both sides of the border, and to the issue of the t trucks carrying weapons to Syria, in addition to the scandal of telephone calls between Erdogan's officials talking about provocative missiles fired by Erdogan's followers from the Syrian side to force NATO intervention. Turkish police have detained 28 persons in Diyarbakir city, among them university students, just before the demonstrations in solidarity with the Syrian city of Ain Larab and in protest against Erdogan's support to the terrorist organization ISIS. Many houses have also been stormed. Tanks and armored vehicles have been deployed in Diyarbakir and Wan cities and strict security measures have been taken in the surrounding areas of the buildings and headquarters of Justice and Development Party in the eastern cities of the country. The American Washington Post newspaper disclosed that more than 1,000 foreign terrorists came to Syria monthly despite the air raids led by the U.S. French President François Hollande stressed the necessity of fighting ISIS terrorists and supporting what he called the moderate opposition. In turn, Turkish President Erdogan renewed demand to establish a no-fly zone to the north of Syria. Meanwhile, the U.S. The Washington Post newspaper disclosed that more than 1,000 foreign terrorists came to Syria monthly despite the air raids led by the U.S. The new report by the U.N. Security Council also said that the number of foreign terrorists coming to Syria and Iraq has remarkably increased, referring that about 15,000 foreign terrorists joined the ISIS and other extremist terrorist organizations. The report also said that al-Qaeda terrorist organizations' prisons retreated in favor of the ISIS. Electorates in Donetsk and Lugansk republics have continued to cast their ballots since early morning in the presidential and parliamentarian elections. Authorities in Donetsk have authorized the Ukrainian citizens who have residence permits to vote. It is to be noted that the number of those who have the right to vote in the Republic of Donetsk amounts to 3.2 million voters, whereas their number amounts to 1 million in Lugansk. Russian Ministry of Defense has successfully launched the ballistic missile Topol-M. A Russian military source has said that the missile hit the target set in the farthest east of the country. Syria has taken part in the festivity of the world's Environment Day. Reports released by the Institute of Sustainable Development and International Relations has indicated that 70% of gas emission are being released by the U.S., Britain, Germany, Russia, J Japan, France and South Korea, which results in global warming, which in turn has dire consequences on the world's environment. Algerian President Abdelaziz Bouteflika took part in the 60th anniversary of the revolution against the French occupation in Algiers. President Bouteflika described in a letter to the Algerian people on this occasion the French occupation as an occupation that affected every aspect of the Algerian life. The French occupation did not even spear a single inch in Algeria, believing that it took the country with its resources forever. Concerts. Concerts were organized on the occasion of the 60th anniversary against the French occupation in the main square in the middle of the Algerian capital, which was attended by thousands of people. And with this, we conclude our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region, you can always view this bulletin on our website in English, syriaonline.sy. After the break, it's our latest business and market news. God bless you and long live Syria.